to 1.3 odd percent. Uh, let's welcome in our next guest, Mayuresh Joshi, fund manager at Angel Broking. Mayuresh, good afternoon. The recent rally after the Fed move, the BOJ move, uh, does it surprise you or you expected that if things would be in line, markets could see a relief rally? No, again, I think uh, looking at what kind of data points were actually coming out from the U.S. markets, uh, it was largely expected that, that the U.S. Fed will not move on the rates uh, and relief rally was expected to come across uh, on global markets, including us. So I think not surprised by what we've seen in the markets. But the sustainability of this rally is something that we need to really uh, look at. Uh, liquidity is still extremely strong for an economy like ours, which is strongly placed within the emerging pact. And largely, I think if corporate earnings revive, as one really assumes over the next few quarters, you might have this rally very well continue. So yes, I think maintaining my positive view onto the markets. Right, uh, and uh, at these levels, you would not suggest fresh buying? So one really has to be very selective, Pankaj, at this point of time, uh, because valuations uh, from uh, at least an FI17 perspective have become stretched for a few sectors. A few companies within those sectors are looking stretched as well. Uh, so largely, it's going to be a bottom-up approach. Stock-specific calls uh, is the R uh, of the need. Uh, and largely, if you're going to talk about uh, what probably can move up, I think it's going to be only in a staggered manner. I think you should not be looking aggressively at putting your money at one point of time. Invest in a staggered manner over the next few weeks. Uh, I think that's the best way of approaching it, but have a stock-specific action in place. As far as uh, the mid-cap space is concerned, or rather the small-cap space, that continues to be at a high, uh, but expectations are pretty high at, at these levels, at least from uh, the index itself. Well, yes, again, I think uh, that entire index has moved up significantly. Uh, and as I was uh, mentioning earlier as well, I think uh, some price movements have been so sharp uh, that they probably exceeded uh, what earnings might uh, come out. So a few stocks have definitely done well within a few sectors, whether that be agrochemicals, uh, whether that be mid-cap cement or small-cap cement, sugar stocks. Uh, but largely one needs to now uh, understand the fact that earnings need to come in on a consistent basis and the kind of base that they're probably going to grow over the next few quarters if that probably disappoints, uh, you might see some sell-off happening in these stocks. Uh, so largely, I think it's going to be an extremely stock-specific call when it comes to the small and mid-cap space. Right. Uh, as far as uh, you know, pharma is concerned, uh, that's a lot of uh, you know, a lot of action in the pharma pack, and a lot of technical analysts telling us that pharma may tend to do well. Uh, any view as far as uh, pharma stocks are concerned? So as far as the export oriented theme which is pharma and IT, I think uh, a lot of concerns have probably played out on the pharma stocks uh, and those primary concerns were uh, FDA related issues. Now to a large extent I think uh, most of the pharma companies affected by the FDA issues will see some amount of pressure or pain on their balance sheets as far as the regulatory compliances go and the compliance costs itself uh, might take sheen off in terms of numbers for the better part of FI17. But the large call has been uh, positive on stocks within the pharma space uh, because post FI18 as these remedial and remediation issues uh, probably start receding and the kind of pipeline that they've got specifically in the generic market in the US uh, I think that's a strong pipeline that these companies possess as the drugs start getting approval I think the size of the drugs individually within the spaces that they operate I think that can have a significant say in terms of how the earnings will pan out so I think I've got a positive view on pharma but again I think one really needs to take stock specific action within this space uh, because my own sense is over the next two years uh, this, these stocks will do well because of the pipeline that they've got and the kind of expenses that have got front-loaded on their balance sheets along with the cost that they've probably incurred. I think FI17 is largely over with. I think the companies uh, and the analysts will probably start to look at numbers beyond FI18, which, which looks far better than what we've probably seen or we, which we might witness in FI17. Any view on Glenmark? Uh, that's a name which a lot of people are suggesting may do well. We had uh, three technical analysts today saying that Glenmark may do well. So again, the larger call has been uh, uh, to go for the frontline stocks uh, within the pharma space uh, and a few stocks are still languishing within the frontline space. Uh, so as, as I mentioned earlier, I think uh, once these issues start receding over the next few quarters and as new drug approvals start coming through, I think the earnings re-rating will happen because A, they'll be working on an extremely low base and B, I think the kind of earnings momentum that you'll probably see because of the new applications coming through can have a significant um, uh, uh, impact in terms of how the earnings will look uh, beyond F. So I think I'm looking at the larger pharma names uh, rather than Glenmark at this point of time. 
as far as auto is concerned despite the recent rally uh, do you expect numbers to you know be strong and meet street estimates the festive uh, demand is expected to be good Oh yes, I think it's a common phenomenon, right, Pankaj? Uh, the push-through will happen at the dealer end uh, because the festive season is going to come round. And again, I think let's have a look at what kind of volumes have actually played out of the last two years. To cite an example, I think Maruti Suzuki's volumes uh, were between five and six percent for the better part of uh, last couple of years. Now again, I think uh, working on the base uh, that we've got, which is low, if you assume volume grew to be anywhere between ten to twelve percent for the better part of this year and the next, uh, I think that's going to be an exponential jump in terms of how the uh, volumes will play out. the realizations obviously are improving they are introducing new platforms uh, and again the kind of equation that one really sees between the yen the dollar and the rupee i think that is largely taken into effect because the indirect exports have come down whether the stock has moved up definitely yes has the valuations become a little bit too much at this point of time probably yes because if you're looking at the kind of eps that maruti is probably generating at this point of time is close to anywhere between 230 to 240 or rupees based on fi 18 estimates similarly for the two wheeler pack uh, so in that sense itself i think the volumes will come through at least for the quarter and the quarter to come up. after that and then they'll start working on uh, what kind of base they are working on but looking at the trends that you've seen good monsoons uh, the seven pay commission recommendations coming through i think the volume trend should probably uh, remain stable and that leverage will start playing on the balance sheet so yes i think if you're holding on to those stocks uh, within the auto space i think you should continue holding on and uh, what would be the top picks in the auto pack that you have no again i think uh, I have liked Tata Motors for a length of time, uh, uh, so I think if you're holding on to Tata Motors, you should definitely continue holding on to Tata Motors. JLR is a story which is uh, doing pretty well, both on the wholesale numbers, retail numbers, ex-China numbers have been extremely encouraging. Even the Chinese numbers have been uh, quite reasonable so far. Even on the domestic scene, the MNCB volumes, uh, though might look subdued over the next few months, I think over the next few quarters, the pickup will start happening, and the new PV launches that they're doing on the domestic front should also hold good. Similarly, on the two-wheeler space, as I mentioned earlier, I think if you're holding onto a stock like Hero Motor, my own sense is the Leap program still benefits will still reaping through and accrue through in the five seventeen. The management still expects ninety bits to come through anywhere between two sixty to two eighty odd crores in terms of cost savings. And though you might see increased spending on the ad front on new launches, you'll still see a bit margins and a bit of margin staying between the fifteen and sixteen percent range, uh, which is quite commendable. Volume growth again, I think, as I mentioned earlier, I think anywhere between ten and eleven percent is what we perceive. The new launches that are coming through are extremely. encouraging the new launch specifically in the 125 cc segment which is going to be glamour is going to be an extremely interesting one so i think if you're holding on to stocks like a hero uh, maruti tata motors continue holding on uh, uh, to these stocks with a long term perspective as far as it is concerned valuations are attractive uh, or you think that business momentum is more important than valuations No valuations are definitely in favor of IT companies at this point of time, and specifically the large cap IT ones. Uh, but largely, I think uh, let's draw out the fact Q1 was marred with wage costs and visa hikes, uh, and that took sheen away from the EBITDA and the EBIT front for IT companies. Q3, Q4 traditionally weak quarters, and the Brexit impact, if it comes through, will be felt significantly in terms of discretionary spending cuts. If that has to happen in Q3, Q4, now that largely leads uh, the asking run rate for Q2. to be pretty large so i think the it companies might be able to do that but again we have seen some profit warnings come through and that probably is going to have some amount of effect in terms of the entire guidance in terms of constant currency for a whole host of it companies so i think valuations look attractive at this point of time so infosys uh, probably is uh, trading at uh, very reasonable valuation so is tcs so is hcl tech but my own sense is that fi 17 will be marred by all these issues combined together which will basically mean that these companies might underperform compared to the other sectors which are more cyclical in nature at this point of time but yes i think any further corrections onto the stock would give buying opportunities so the best way is to wait for q2 results wait for management commentaries and then probably buy out uh, the larger cap it stocks in a staggered manner what's the view on reliance 1 1100 sorry 1103 for reliance Now again, I maintain my view, which is uh, that the core businesses are expected to do well, FI 17, FI 18 onwards. So I think once the commissioning of the remaining facilities start coming through the next few quarters, FI 18 numbers specifically on the core businesses, which is pet can I'm defining, are expected to do well. So they're expected to throw reasonable amount of cash, uh, which has been uh, the hallmark over the last few quarters. Nobody is expecting really anything to come out of telecom. So in that sense itself, uh, the launch that we've seen. The kind of front-loaded expenses that Reliance has basically incurred, both in terms of capex 
and then the kind of OPEX that they'll probably incur over the better part of next year. I think that will take some amount of money off uh, in terms of uh, not contributing to the profitability. But largely, I think uh, the core businesses are expected to do well. With new capacities coming through, I think the GRM should hold up for uh, Reliance because Reliance is basically having a very nice uh, heavy light uh, uh, crude uh, uh, capacity and uh, that will probably hold uh, them out. So largely I think it's a long drawn out story but I think FI or 18 numbers based on petchem and refining should hold out for reliance on a consolidated piece. And would you be a buyer at this level or again you know the range has been quite tight so you'll wait for the lower end of range to come? No, again I think uh, you need to basically wait out uh, for, for lower levels to come through I think. Uh, but largely, I think uh, if, if I talk about the oil and gas pack uh, in general, I think uh, OMCs is still something that I'll uh, probably be looking at. Uh, yes, you've seen huge amount of expansion in terms of how the earnings have come through, and that is primarily based on uh, reduction of uh, working capital, reduction of debt, and that has basically happened because of no subsidy burden coming on their balance sheets. Uh, the marketing margin increases that we've probably seen both on petrol and diesel have also played out, but there is still some scope uh, left for the marketing margins both on diesel and uh, petrol to improve. And that takes their earnings per share uh, much higher from the current level. The kind of capex that they are doing, the new capacity is expected to come through over the next uh, uh, few years. I think the GRMs are going to hold up pretty well, and the distillate yields, even over the next few quarters, should hold up pretty nicely. So I think OMC is on decline. So if one really gets them, and if one really gets a chance to invest in a staggered manner over the next few months, I think that will be a nice way of playing this entire oil and gas thing. If we look at uh, Bharat Financial or SKS Microfinance, it raised some amount today and it's done pretty well after that. Is that a, is that a sector, a space that you would like irrespective of the valuations that it has? The valuations definitely are looking stretched uh, at this point of time. But microfinance as a space uh, has a huge potential for an economy like ours. It's largely untapped even at this point of time. And the pace that it is expected to grow over the next few years, I think it presents huge opportunities for a whole host of players. So in that sense itself, I think the kind of spreads that they enjoy, specifically on the microfinance business, is pretty large. Whether they'll be able to enjoy these margins at the same time, work on volumes in terms of how the growth may happen, I think the growth prospects look pretty, pretty clear and pretty sharp even at this point of time. The margin should hold up as well because as cost of funds start coming down, over the next few quarters, I think the spreads and NIMS uh, will get maintained for these players. Now the argument would be whether valuations are steep, valuations definitely are steep. Uh, but there are a lot of players probably that are foraying into this and that they are growing their business in a very staggered and sustained manner. So I think look out for those players because at this point of time I think Varish Financial, at least from a valuation perspective, looks pretty stretched. Just a word on uh, the Nifty uh, overall, uh, Mayuresh, at these levels. Uh, be extremely careful if you are buying into any sector, whether it's uh, cheap in terms of valuations or as expensive as microfinance. Again, there are two sets of uh, the market at this point of time, Pankaj. Uh, on one hand of the market, I think autos, banks, NBFCs, agrochemical companies uh, are, are, uh, are doing extremely well and that is getting duly reflected in their share prices and the valuations thereof. On the other end of the spectrum, you've got companies within the IT space, within the telecom space, which are probably languishing. And the reasons thereof are also very, very valid in that sense. So the underperformance for IT, as we discussed earlier, might very well continue, though might, you might see some good results coming out of Q2. But largely telecom, again, with the kind of debts on their balance sheet, the kind of leverage that they have, kind of servicing that they have to do, the kind of spectrum payments that they'll probably have to do with the new spectrum auctions coming through and the kind of competition that one is perceiving from Geo, which is giving them a tough uh, task at uh, hand going ahead. I think these sectors probably will be underperformers. So I think within the outperformers, you really need to pick and choose because these sectors, as I mentioned earlier, in terms of the historical valuations, have moved much ahead, uh, their three-year and five-year average. Uh, so one really needs to do a bottom-up approach in these sectors. But this side of the market uh, is looking extremely strong in terms of both volume and earnings growth. <coughs> right, Mayuresh, thank you so much for taking out uh, time for us. Hope to see you again. Taking a break, coming back in two minutes, 10 minutes to go for markets to shut and Nifty is at the day's low, down 36 uh, or points 8,831.